It has been noted by Ofsted that citizenship is one of the worst taught subjects. And I think some teachers think of citizenship as different from other uh, areas of the curriculum and that it's somehow akin to PSHE. But it should be dealt with in a structured way and that citizenship isn't different from history or geography or maths or science or any other subject. Dane Court School in North Wingfield, Derbyshire was described by Ofsted as making an outstanding contribution to the development of citizenship. We've come here to find out from Jamie Elliott, Citizenship Coordinator, a bit more about the lesson structures he's using to such good effect. Excellent. The good thing about this, this structure is that uh, it, it is clearly defined and as clearly defined in marks throughout the lesson. There are various tasks in there that keep people on task and keep them motivated throughout the lesson and that the tasks are clearly linked to their objective. We'll be taking a detailed look at Jamie's Year 9 Special Educational Needs Group as they're introduced to the topic of rights and responsibilities. Jamie feels that his lesson structure can be used as a model for any citizenship lesson with any group and details of Jamie's lesson plan are posted on the Teachers TV website. And this can be used in various different formats and for various different topics. For example, uh, I use the exact same format or a very similar format for issues of crime, causes of crime. So this is just one example of many examples where this type of structure of a lesson would be used. First thing I want you to do, folks, just look at the board. Plenty of pictures, plenty of information. A lot of information, really, when you think about it. Oh. The first two to five minutes of any lesson are crucial. Crucial for the, the pace of the rest of the lesson, crucial for student engagement for the rest of the lesson. What's it about? Oh. Tom? Rights and responsibilities. Rights and responsibilities. Well, then, it is about rights and responsibilities, but it's a little oh. bit more specific. The initial PowerPoint presentation used images to stimulate inquiry, to make them think that little bit more about what they may be doing. Rather than a teacher coming and directing the initial start of the lesson, it's almost they are actually directing themselves. And it gives them time to think. It's about the thinking skills and giving them the opportunity to think about what they're doing as well. According to this slideshow, whose rights and responsibilities, what type of people are we looking at today? What type of people? Is it poor people who haven't got their homes? Not necessarily poor people, poor who? Look at children. Children. This lesson is going to be specifically looking at the rights and responsibilities of children. So rights and responsibility. Let's have a look at our objectives for today. We're going to gain an understanding of some of the rights and responsibilities that children have. And we're also going to be used to use case study evidence to give reasons and opinions about rights of children in small class discussions. The second objective was linked directly to them raising their attainment and this was a way of using case study and explaining giving reasons for their answers in terms of the outcomes of looking at these case studies. One between two. Now these cards in front of you have various different statements on them. These statements are what some children have said they should have as rights. Well, we're going to actually decide whether they should or should not. Let's just have a look at the main headings on this data capture sheet, please. The first title says, it is important that children should have this right. Next one is, it is not very important that children should have this right. And the last one, Daniel, is children should not have this right. What you've got to do is look through those cards in front of you and you have to decide which column that card goes in. Adults should not bully me, beat me or abuse me in any way. No, that's actually quite important, isn't it? Yeah, that's very important. I should have the right to decide what I learn at school. No, that is very important. What I suggest you do, folks, once you have finished, read through them and make sure carefully 
you agree as a pair. And it gave them an opportunity to actually develop their knowledge and understanding of what some of the rights are of children, but also for them to develop their ability to explain, to give a reason for something that they say, uh, which again links directly to the raising their attainment levels in citizenship by for them being able to provide several clear reasons or giving clear reasons for their answers. Remember that I'm asking you to develop your explanations here as well. Okay, so you need to be thinking about when I ask why, how we answer or explain why. Christopher. Adults should not bully me, beat me or abuse me in any way. And why did you put that one as the important one? Because adults shouldn't abuse kids because it's not right and it's not very fair because they're doing a bad thing and they should get in trouble for it so it's not right. Was that's that a good, good explanation, folks? Yeah. yeah. What do we do for a Rona? Delia's lessons because when you get to do activities and um, you take, you, as well as doing activities, you're taking all the work <coughs> in and you know, what you, you know what you're doing instead of just sitting there doing writing out a textbook. What rights do you think are not important that children should have? Leon? I should have the right to decide what I learn at school. Okay, and you put that one as, not, as a not important <laughs> one. Why did you put it down there as a not important one, you two? Because you shouldn't like, tell them what you want to learn and everything. Uh, who we should... should uh, we, we should tell you. Yeah. But is there a time in your school life when you do decide what you learn? Yeah. You can, like, pick your lessons, what you can have. You can pick your GCSEs, can't you? So, to some degree, you have a lot of power in deciding what you do and what you learn. Feedback throughout the lesson is important, first of all, for the teacher's point of view, because you know what they are learning. You know how far they have learned, and you know how far they are meeting the objective. Then secondly, it's important also for them to have that feedback opportunity. Open questioning is, is crucial for them to develop their understanding even further, getting them to explain what they actually mean. These are examples of children's rights. This is written down in the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Now then, the question is, are these rights always carried out for the children? What you've got in front of you is a piece of information, a case study, and we're looking at a real-life account. We're looking at a street child in Africa. What I want you to do is read through this information very, very carefully and find out where in this information Kwame is not getting some of these rights. The, the case study exercise that we put forward was important for, for their learning, for them not only just to understand what rights are, but where in the world rights are actually being abused. In Africa, his father worked as a farmer, but his work was, was not regular enough to pay for Kwame's school fees. Ghana, you can't go to school if you can't pay. Right then, stop there. According to that list on there, it says that children should have a free education. Does Kwame? No. Why not? Because they can't pay to go. Because Excellent. Fantastic. So you need to underline that part, and then you need to read through the rest of it and see where others from there he doesn't get. Yeah. Ultimately, it makes it real. It makes citizenship real. It makes the rights and responsibilities real. It puts in the context that is happening now. So we can see, even though countries around the world sign up to this and say this is what children should have, there are a lot of examples where they don't. So how much preparation does Jamie's lesson involve? In terms of the resources themselves, that they, they, well, apart from the images, because uh, I don't go out there and take the photographs myself, I actually develop myself. I, I put the effort in and the legwork into actually developing these resources. I think it's important that you have ownership of that resource because it, it helps with the delivery, it helps with the impact. In terms of how we actually research this information, we use, I use the internet a lot and I use a lot of uh, citizenship websites that are out there and available for teachers, that it still takes me 45 minutes to plan that type of lesson. When using case studies, Jamie tries to make them more relevant to the pupils by linking them with school-wide initiatives. The aim is to make pupils more aware of the impact they can have beyond the classroom. So your 50p is that you contribute to the Uganda Fund, help go towards and support these people, because this is happening now.
we are linked with you know a school in Uganda so that kind of makes it a little bit more real their actions do count in terms of being citizens in this school globally Jamie uses mini plenaries throughout the lesson to assess the class's learning and let them know they're on the way to meeting the objectives our first objective was to gain an understanding of some of the rights and responsibilities that children have. Have we met that objective? If we have, how have we met that objective? Have we give reasons and opinions about the rights of children? How have I done that, Christopher? Uh, when we like, answer the question, then you've asked us to contribute on, on it. Fantastic. So we're getting to meeting our objectives. His lessons, they go great short, like normal lessons, when everyone's being naughty and everything. It like goes longer, but then when we're in Mr. Elliot's, it just goes short. Like, don't seem like an hour. Next thing I want us to do is pull those table forward and arrange the chairs into circle time, please. Thank you. One of the biggest reasons why we use circle time is that it encourages cooperation, it encourages discussion, debate, encourages people to develop the listening skills and speaking skills. So it's a great tool for developing the social skills and the skills that they need to be informed citizens. Often, we have responsibilities. Has anybody got any responsibilities at home? Daniel? Yeah, looking after my nana. Looking after your grandma, why, why is that then? Just helping watch pots and that. Just helping her out, that's quite an admirable thing to do, to help uh, grandma <coughs> and grandparents, isn't it? When mum's gone out, I've got the responsibility of looking after the house. That is a big responsibility, isn't it, <laughs> looking after the house? It creates a sensitivity and it creates an ability for, for students to approach students about particular subjects that they may have found difficult to talk about. Bringing their own experiences in, again, creates that wider picture. It creates that ability for them to see that other people are experiencing things that relate directly to what we've done in terms of lessons. What responsibilities do you have then in school? Respecting school property. Respecting school oh. property and other people's property as well. Excellent, well done. What is he linked into? Something that we have in this school? Citizenship. Citizenship, but what else is he linked into? The Dane Court Charter. The Student Charter. All those things that you've just said are in the student charter. What Our does citizenship charter. expert Dr Hilary Kremen make of Jamie's approach? Part of the reason why the young people were so engaged in that lesson is because uh, of the excellent teaching that we saw. It's very important that you get a coherence between what's taught in a citizenship lesson and then the values, attitudes and processes that are used elsewhere in the school. And so making those links between citizenship and the wider school communities is really, really important. It's about the contribution that young people themselves can make and about them engaging with the world, um, even if it's the world within their own school, that it's somehow beyond this particular classroom. Excellent work, folks. Off you go. See you later, sir. Good day. Good day. Good day. Don't forget that details of Jamie's lesson plan can be found on the Teachers TV website. We can actually detect whether citizenship teaching is having an effect in terms of attainment. But that's not just it. It's also about making a better person. But how do we go about judging that? It's very difficult. All we can do is hope that we provide the skills to make that better person. And we can see evidence around the school in terms of the way people do now cooperate with one another, the way they do speak to one another. Some years ago, this was a little bit different situation. So this is a slow process, but it is having an impact.